All right, my dear students, this is your accounting coach ARD, and today we are going to discuss break even analysis. Break even analysis is basically part of marginal costing. Marginal cost means variable cost or incremental cost, the additional cost that is incurred when making a single product of unit, single unit of product or service. This is marginal cost. We are going to discuss about break even analysis means break even analysis is also known as CVP analysis. CVP cost volume and profit analysis. Break even point means a point when there is no profit nor loss. Now whenever we start a business, whenever any entrepreneur start a business, he or she is not concerned with the profit from the first day. Now from the start of the business, the owner is not concerned about the profits. Firstly, the owner is concerned about breaking even. Breaking even means if we are not earning any profit from the business, at least we should not put money into the business on a daily basis. This means we want our business to survive uh, uh, with itself. We want our business to stand on its own feet. So this is basically the concept behind break-even analysis. Uh, so as, uh, as a student, if you are studying and you need to pay fees for the examination and for the tuitions, you are concerned with, sometimes there's a feeling, I don't know you think about this or not. Sometimes when I was student, I used to think about this, that if I'm not uh, able to contribute some money for my home, for my uh, family, at least I should not take out money from my, f from my family and at least I should earn this much amount so that I can uh, bear my own expenses. So basically I wanted to break even uh, and the concept is behind that. So let's uh, discuss the concept. This is my own example and with the help of this example I'll be explaining the concepts to you. First of all, for example, we have owned and uh, we have started a business and we are selling some product, maybe a shirt. We are selling a dress shirt for $500 and that shirt that we are selling for $500 cost us $350. So we are buying shirts from some wholesaler or maybe a, a small cottage industry or maybe some place and the shirt that we are buying in for 350 now if I deduct variable cost from the selling price I get some figure that is 150 now few th people think that this figure is a profit uh, this is basically not a profit uh, if your friend says you are very lucky you are selling shirt for 500 and buying it for 350 you are earning straight profit on all, all the shirts that you sell that is 150 so you need to tell him you need to explain him that my dear uh, friend this is not profit I also need to uh, bear the expenses of my shop that are the fixed cost for the shop so what you need to do this the amount that we have got this is known as a contribution so what is basically a contribution contribution is the amount that uh, remains after deducting variable cost from the selling price now the formula is selling price minus all variable cost is equal to contribution per unit contribution is basically a profit that is before deducting any fixed cost from the business uh, the full form for this contribution is contribution towards covering fixed cost and making a profit this contribution uh, we will uh, use this contribution in two ways. First of all, we will be covering the fixed cost of the business. Uh, after we have covered all the fixed costs of the business, the contribution that remains with us is a profit. So we need to deduct the fixed cost for the business. For example, the shop that you have uh, opened for the outlet that you have opened for selling shirts, there is rent for that outlet. There is one salesman that you have uh, hired for selling the shirts then there is an electricity bill then there are taxes and these are all fixed costs for the business for example the fixed cost for the business is total hundred thousand dollars for 
per month for example hundred thousand dollars fixed cost is there and we deducted uh, we need to divide with total units for example we budgeted we estimated that we need to sell 1000 shirts in one month we estimated that we'll be selling 1000 shirts in a month in order to get the fixed cost per shirt that is hundred so what we did we need we divided 1000 shirts with the total fixed cost in order to get the fixed cost per unit now uh, according to estimate we'll be selling a shirt for 500 buying it for 350 we'll be uh, getting contribution of 150 after uh, deducting the fixed cost of $100 we'll be left with 50 and this the 50 is the actually profit per shirt profit per unit so now let's change the scenario a little bit scenario 2 for example we are selling the same shirt for 500 buying it for 350 again the contribution 150 what happened uh, that after a month passed we came to realize that the amount of shirts that we estimated for selling a month is far more than the shirts we can actually sell so for example we overestimated the number of shirts and the new estimate is only 500 shirts can be sold in a uh, normal month in an average month only if we sell only 500 shirts then the fixed cost per shirt would be 200 now 1 lakh divided by 500 shirts that is 200 now the contribution is still 150 but the fixed cost is increased or uh, at that of $200 now what remains $50 is a negative value now this is known as loss loss per shirt now uh, let's move to the third scenario again we are selling a shirt for 500 buying it for 350 uh, every shirt is contributing 150 towards covering fixed cost and for example we are selling a certain amount of shirts and the fixed cost is exactly the same for example that is 150 per shirt now the contribution and the fixed cost equates these are both the same values and what we get is nil that is zero and this zero means no profit no loss that is break even now this is basically the point when we are earning no profit no loss that is breaking even now as a business owner would you be interested to find out that how many shirts or how many units do you need to sell in a given period maybe month or quarter or an year in order to break even yes because the first target for any business is basically breaking even so break even analysis also known as cvp cost volume profit analysis uh, first of all, the formula for calculating break-even units formula is total fixed cost upon contribution per unit. Total fixed cost upon contribution per unit. Now let's apply this formula to our shirt business example. Now the total fixed cost is hundred thousand for per month or per year, whatever it is. Now contribution per shirt. Every shirt is contributing one fifty. Selling price minus all variable cost is equal to contribution per unit. Now, if we divide 150 with 100,000, we get a figure of 666.666. So, I rounded up it to 667 shirts. So, if we sell 667 shirts in any given month, we can easily break even. That is no profit, no loss. Okay. So, now let's verify this. Although, we not need to verify this in an examination question, for, but just need to understand for the sake of understanding. Just let's, let's make a small income statement. First of all, starting with sales revenue, if you are selling 667 shirts and one shirt is sold for 500, the total revenue that we'll be getting is triple three 500. If you are buying 667 shirts and we bought one shirt for 350, the variable cost would be two double three 500. Then the contribution that we are getting is $100,000, that is contribution. Then if we deduct fixed cost from this contribution figure, again, our fixed cost is also 100,000. Now there comes no profit, no loss scenario. So we already calculated this 667 with this formula. So 667 is basically the minimum amount of shirts that we need to sell in any given month in order to come to a no profit, no loss scenario. Now what happens if we sell more than 667 shirt? If we sell, for example, 668 shirt. If we sell one more shirt than the break even, what happens? Our revenue increases by 500. The original revenue was triple three 500. If we add one more shirt to this $500, the revenue becomes 334,000. 
Again, if we buy one more shirt, two double three five hundred plus three fifty, the variable cost becomes two double three eight fifty. Then the contribution was previously one lakh, now it is one lakh one fifty. Now, as you can clearly see, the contribution is increasing by one fifty dollars. Then the fixed cost still remains at hundred thousand. Again, fixed cost is a cost that remains fixed no matter what is the volume of output. If the volume is increasing or the volume is decreasing, the fixed cost would remain fixed. Now the contribution is increased, but the fixed cost is still the same. Then there is one fifty profit. Now what happens? Every unit that is being sold after six six seven is generating some contribution, and that contribution is basically profit for the business. Okay. Any contribution after breaking even that is coming into the business is a profit for the business. Now it's better to sell more and more shirts, more and more units after breaking even in order to increase our profit. Now this was basically break even units. If I ask you, if the examiner asks you, how much dollar revenue we need to generate in order to break even? The formula that we previously discussed is for number of units. Now we need to discuss the formula for break even revenue. Now the easy formula is that uh, if you have already calculated break even units from this formula, just need to multiply this with the selling price. Now formula becomes break even units into selling price per unit. We have already uh, calculated six six seven shirts. If we sell a shirt for five hundred dollars, I will be getting revenue of triple three five hundred. So this was very easy. If you have already calculated break even units, just need to multiply with the selling price per unit in order to get with break even revenue. Now, what happens if we haven't calculated break-even units, and we need to calculate break-even revenue directly without first calculating break-even units? So there is another alternate formula for break-even revenue, that is fixed cost. Now, see, fixed cost is the same like in this formula. Divide by contribution per unit. No, we won't be taking contribution per unit. Instead, we'll be taking CS ratio. Now, what is this CS ratio? CS ratio stand for contribution to sales ratio. Fixed cost remains the same, hundred thousand. CS ratio means contribution upon sales. Contribution to sales ratio. CS ratio is also known as PV ratio, profit volume ratio. CS ratio also known as profit volume ratio, PV ratio. Now CS ratio is contribution upon sales. Contribution upon sales. Now, if we have given contribution per unit, see contribution per shirt is given. We'll be using contribution per shirt in the numerator, and in the denominator, we'll be using selling price per shirt. We are selling one shirt for five hundred. Contribution per unit and selling price per unit. So one fifty upon five hundred. This become point three. Point three is basically thirty percent. If we multiply it with hundred, this means thirty percent. Now, what does thirty percent means? Thirty percent means uh, if we if we are selling something for five hundred dollar, out of this five hundred dollar, thirty percent is a contribution. Now, if I multiply thirty percent with five hundred, I'll be getting one fifty. Now, for every dollar, we are earning a contribution of thirty cents. Now, the more there is contribution to sales ratio, the better it is for the business, because more uh, how how much the, however the contribution increases, our profit also increases. So if I divide one lakh with this CS ratio, that is point three, we'll be using point three as for decimal. The revenue becomes triple three five hundred. Now there is a slight difference in this value and this value. This is triple three five hundred. This is triple three triple three. Now, why it is the difference? This is because I have rounded off the number of shirts. I have not taken triple six point six six seven shirts. I have rounded this off. If I did not rounded off this figure, this these two figures would be the same triple three, a triple three or triple three five hundred. Okay. So contribution to sales ratio. I hope you understood this contribution to sales ratio scenario. If the contribution is per unit, the selling price should also be per unit. But if there is a contribution that is total contribution, so denominator also becomes total revenue, total sales revenue. Now let's discuss some another scenario, and the scenario is reverse working to find contribution or selling price. Now let us come with an example. For example, we have already calculated break-even units that is six six seven shirts. Now what happened? Being a business owner. You may find that the 
target for break even is very high we do not need to keep a target break even of 667 so what we did we need to relax our target for break even why uh, if we are if there is a higher break even point this is not good for the business means the greater is the break even point the the more time it would take to achieve the profit okay so what we did we need to relax the break even target to for example 500 units now let me give you an example uh, see my dear students we have already learned this formula fixed cost upon contribution per unit in order to calculate break even units what if uh, I am given with the break even units and I need to calculate this contribution per unit say so I need to find this contribution per unit how can I find this contribution per unit I need to substitute these two values the contribution per unit that is being divided will becomes multiply coming on the this side of the equation and the break even unit that is being multiplied will come on the opposite side that is and divide so the formula becomes contribution per unit divided by a break even units now what I am doing I am doing uh, I am working on a scenario in which fixed cost and break even units are already given and I need to find out the contribution per unit so I just uh, change the formula mathematically in order to find something else for example there is a scenario in an examination question if fixed cost is 1 lakh that is already the same as a previous scenario variable cost per shirt is again the same that is 350 we are buying one shirt for 350 then break even unit target is given 500 units means we are not uh, okay with 667 shirts break even target we need to relax our target to 500 units what I want I need to break even by selling 500 shirts only because after 500 whatever shirts I need to sell this becomes my profit okay break even units is already given what we need to find we need to find the selling price to break even we need to find the selling price now this is the basically scenario that we need to work it on now let's move to the next slide uh, again the formula becomes contribution per unit up upon is equal to fixed cost upon break even units this is the same formula we just substituted a break even units and contribution per unit now the fixed cost is 1 lakh I need to cover 1 lakh for each month by selling how many shirts by selling 500 shirts now if I need to cover 1 lakh contribution by selling 500 shirts how much each shirt should contribute 1 lakh divided by 500 each shirt should contribute now 200 why because I need to sell fewer shirts and I still need to break even so each shirt should contribute 200 previously the answer was 150 if you remember now I need to earn a contribution of 200 now what we need to find we need to find the selling price if we can if you want to earn a contribution of 200 on each shirt now as you may be aware my dear students the formula for contribution per unit was selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit so yeah, if 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 I want to uh, calculate contribution uh, I need to detect variable cost with the selling price now the selling price is not given I need to find the selling price if the selling price I need to find this this is an X what we need to do this variable cost is deducting I need to add it uh, if it becomes on the opposite side of the equation okay now the formula becomes for selling price is equal to contribution per unit plus variable cost this variable cost is deducted this comes becomes plus so I need to earn a contribution of 200 on each shirt and I am buying this shirt for 350 again how much I need to sell a shirt for I need to sell a shirt for 550 instead of 500 now my dear students if you want to earn profit earlier than 667 shirts and if you have a target that you need to sell only 500 uh, shirts in order to break even and after 500 501 shirt becomes your profit you need to sell each shirt for 550 now the selling price need to increase to 550 instead of 500 now I can also verify this just for the sake of understanding sales revenue if I'm selling 500 shirts each shirt is being sold for 550 I've increased my selling price the revenue becomes 275 if I'm buying these shirts from an outside supplier and again assuming there are no discounts and all this 
one shirt is bought for 350 the variable cost become 175 then the, the contribution of 1 lakh then fixed cost remains the same that is 1 lakh again again we get break even no profit no loss so i hope my dear students you understood this concept then we have some other concepts behind this and that is target profit see whenever a business starts first of all he is more concerned with breaking even okay first of all on the first day we are not concerned we are least bothered about the profits because profits is something that comes later on the stage first of all we are concerned with breaking even now whenever we uh, started business and the business starts running and we achieve our targets of break even the second thing that comes in the mind that is the profit because we are not an NGO we are not a not-for-profit organization we have started the business finally to earn some business now it's the time we should start dreaming about we should start aiming about the profit for the business and now comes the concept of target profit now my dear student the formula that we uh, first of all studied for break even was fixed cost upon contribution per unit this was the formula now in this fixed cost formula i will need to add one more thing that is tp tp stands for target profit now the question is that the previously it was break even units if you are also earning some profit now this is no longer the break even this would become target units okay if we need to calculate uh, if we need to calculate how many units to sell in order to earn this much uh, profit now, now this is the formula only thing that is changed that we have added target profit in the formula and this break even units become target units now let's continue with the original example not with the, this 550 example with the original example of selling a shirt for 500 for example our fixed cost for the business is 100000 and we uh, we discussed a target profit of 50,000. We aimed for a target profit. This should be given in the question that we earn to, uh, we need to earn a profit of 50,000 for each month. Now, again, one shirt is contributing 150. Now, what we need to earn, we need to earn 1 lakh for covering fixed costs. We need to earn 50,000 for covering our home expenses. That is a uh, profit. And we need to uh, earn a total 150,000 contribution if each shirt is contributing 150 how many shirts I need to sell in order to earn a profit of uh, 50,000 there are 1,000 shirts target means if I sell 1,000 shirts in any given month I can also uh, also cover the expenses for running the business and I can also withdraw 50,000 profit I need to verify this figure just for the sake of curiosity if I am selling 1000 shirts, each shirt is originally sold for 1000, the revenue becomes 500,000. Then I, if I am buying these 1000 shirts from a supplier again for 350, assuming there are no discounts, the variable cost is 350, I am getting a contribution of 150. And if the fixed cost is less than the contribution, the difference is profit. Again, as you can see, the target profit is achieved. We can easily earn a profit figure of 50,000. Okay. So, if I am done with calculating target units, what if the examiner asks for target revenue? And now if you have already calculated the target units, what we need to do, we need to multiply the units with the selling price in order to calculate target revenue. So if I am selling 1000 shirts and one shirt is being sold for 500, the revenue that I need to earn is 500,000. Now see this is the 500,000 already calculated. Now what if I need to calculate the target revenue? but I haven't calculated the target units there are no targets unit calculated but I need to calculate the revenue directly so the formula becomes fixed cost divided by CS ratio already studied this formula in break even revenue but we just need to add one thing that is target profit okay target revenue this becomes target revenue now the fixed cost for the business is again 100,000 we need to earn target profit of 50,000 which is given in the question and the CS ratio we have already calculated as 0.3 so CS ratio were contribution upon sales if the contribution is per unit selling price would also be per unit so answer becomes 0.3 if the contribution is total revenue is also total 150,000 divided by 0.3 this becomes target revenue 500,000 okay 
Now, last but not the least, there is the concept of margin of safety. What is safety, my dear students? Margin of safety shows us how safe is the business from incurring a loss. Now, let's first calculate this. Then we need to understand this concept. Margin of safety, the formula, uh, let, let's write something about this. Margin of safety tells us how safe is the business from incurring a loss. Margin of safety formula is budgeted minus break-even. Budgeted minus break-even. If I need to calculate margin of safety in units, this budgeted is also units, budgeted units. And this break-even is also in terms of units. The formula becomes budgeted units minus break-even units. For example, we decided we'll be selling 1000 shirts in a month. Say this would be given in the question. We'll be selling 1000 shirts in a month. And the break even is 667. So our target that we have set is greater than break even. How many units greater? The difference is triple three shirts. Now, what does this triple three units mean? Triple three units means, my dear students, that if our budgeted sales, that is 1000 units, decreases by triple three units, 1000 minus triple three, we have reached the break even, that is double six seven. And if the sales drops more than triple three units, we would be suffering from loss. Okay? So, margin of safety basically tells us that by how much our target or budget goes down in order to reach break even and if it uh, goes down more than break even then we are on the loss now the safety uh, how much safety the greater is the safety there is better it is better okay so the more the margin of safety the it is better for the business now Previously, we calculated margin of safety in terms of units. Now, we need to calculate in terms of revenue. So, this budget units becomes budgeted revenue. And this break-even units also becomes break-even revenue. Now, these are both revenue instead of units. For example, let's calculate it. Uh, if we are selling 1,000 shirts and each shirt is sold for 500, budgeted revenue is for 500,000. Now, if we are uh, breaking even for 667 shirts and each shirt is for sold for uh, 500, though break even revenue we all already calculated as triple three, triple three. 5 lakh minus triple three, triple three. Margin of safety revenue becomes 166667. Now, what does this mean, my dear student? This means we have aimed or we have targeted that we'll be uh, earning sales of 500,000 in every month. So, if our sales decreases by 166667, our sales will reach a target of break even. So, if the sales drops more than 166667, we'll be incurring or will be suffering losses. Okay. So, margin of safety, the greater is the margin of safety, the safe is the business, the more safer is the business from incurring a loss. Now, there are three variants for margin of safety. One is margin of safety in terms of units, then margin of safety in terms of revenue, and sometime examiner asks for margin of safety as a percentage. So, whenever we are being asked for margin of safety as a percentage, the formula becomes budgeted units minus break-even units divide by budgeted units multiply by 100 so the, there is same formula what we did we just need to divide it with budgeted and we need to calculate it multiply by 100 in order to calculate as a percentage now well calculating margin of safety as a percentage it doesn't matter that we take unit or revenue again both units or revenue gives the same answer when calculating margin of safety as a percentage because we are calculating a percentage now budgeted shirts were 1000 break in was 667 so the difference would be triple three shirts as we calculated here difference would be triple three now this triple three shirts would be divided by 1000 again that is budgeted so triple three divided by 1000 becomes 33 percent or one third so what does this mean this means our budgeted sales that is 1000 shirts if it is dropped by one third or 33 percent we are uh, on at 
break even and if it drops more than 33% or more than one third then we'll be suffering losses okay so this is margin of safety if you are calculating percentage in terms of revenue the formula is against the same so what we need to do we need to uh, use revenue instead of units the formula is the same just revenue instead of unit the the, the answer was 16667 we need to divide this by 500 again in order to calculate 33% so what does this mean? This means our budgeted revenue of 5 lakh, if it's dropped by 33% of one third, uh, we come, uh, we reach at a point of break even. Now, uh, if our sales drops more than one third, we'll be suffering from losses. So uh, there is uh, uh, examiners sometimes ask you to calculate margin of safety on budget, or alternatively, it can also give you uh, actual or it can give you forecast so the formula becomes actual minus break even or forecast minus break even so break even remains the same this is constant it does not change so instead of budgeted we can use actual or forecast but the examiner will specifically ask you so what to take whether it's actual forecast or budget if the examiner does not say anything you will always use budget so i hope my dear students you understood the basic concepts behind break-even analysis which is part of marginal costing and if you did if you did benefit from it kindly do share this video from other with other students and also do not forget to subscribe my channel thank you